lot and I'll give you more details about that. So now I'm just waiting to do blood work. Um, make sure everything's okay before surgery day. And ooh, it's a lot. But this is long overdue because the lifestyle that I've been living, no bueno. It's a big no for me. Lost. I don't know. It's like something that just doesn't click in my brain. So I was able to get me a little cup of coffee. Now I have to go get my prescriptions for, I believe, day of surgery and after surgery. And so the doctor said he was going to send me a list of everything I need to do. Email. So I can't believe that it's happening so fast. Everything is just happening so fast. My car just got dirty. Okay, so I made it to my car. Look, found her. And so, for those of you who do not know, that I am about to have a hysterectomy. The bleeding has been horrific. Like, I'll have my girly cycle for a month, a month and a half. I've been admitted for blood transfusions. The last blood transfusion I had, I had to go to the emergency room. I didn't vlog this. I had to go to the emergency room and I don't know, I don't, it's different for me, okay? I'm just talking about my experience. But I don't know, it's just like a black doctor hits different. I had two black doctors so not the intake people when I went to the ER I could barely walk I just could not breathe I couldn't get enough oxygen I, I was tired really fat it was just terrible I, I knew something wasn't right I didn't know what it was well I kind of knew it was the anemia so I went to the emergency room luckily Bobby was here I think she was here for spring break that's right it wasn't May. I was in there for March. That's when I went to the ER in March. And Bobby was with me and I was like, I gotta go to the ER. First I went to a clinic um, that's associated with my job and then they was like, mm, you need to go to the ER. And I was like, alright. And so I went to the ER and they did, they looked, they pulled my little eye things down. You know, they do that. They was like, yeah, it's white in there. They're not supposed to be white, it's supposed to be pink. And they was like, yeah, you're not getting enough oxygen. Your blood is low. They could tell just by doing that. He was like, wow, that's white. And so that's intake. When I got to another room, a black doctor came in. When they figured out I was gonna have the blood transfusion, blah, 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 the black doctor came in to, you know, give all the orders and stuff about what I needed. And he was like, you keep playing with your life. This is not like, he got on me. Like a, like a big brother, you know, or even a father. He was like, no, you play with your life. You can have a stroke, you can have this, you can have that. And my numbers went down to a three. I was still dropping, so I was like a 3.5. And he was like, no, there's nothing to play with. You can have stroke, you can have a heart attack. You can, the all major bodily uh, organ function could stop. And he was like, you need to get this hysterectomy. What you waiting for? It's an in and out procedure. You just need to get it done. And there's no quality of life, blah, blah, blah. He got on me, so that was during intake. And then um, I eventually got into a room. And for this experience, I had, they gave me two bags of blood. Yeah, I had received two bags of blood. And then another doctor came in the next day. They kept me. 
So I stayed. I was thinking I was just going to stay one day because I've experienced that before. And the other doctor came in. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> I was in the bathroom. And Bobby stayed with me. She spent the night with me. And I was in the bathroom brushing my teeth or whatever. It was the next day. Brushing my teeth. You know, open. I could go. And I had taken my eyelashes off. I was like, thank goodness. Okay. And so other black doctor came in. Because I, I didn't plan to stay. So... So they was like, you know, you have to stay overnight because it takes hours, make sure you don't have allergic reaction. And the time of day was a little, little late. So, and so the black doctor came in and he had his his uh, cap on and he had a mask on. And um, he was talking to Bobby. She was like, oh, my mom's in the bathroom, blah, blah, blah. So when I came out, it was like, his eyes was like, ooh, la, la. <laughs> he was like, ooh, let me take my mask off. <laughs> I'm like, but you had your mask on for a reason, right? So why are you taking it off now, okay? So, um, and we talking, he got on me like a big brother or, or dad or, con you know, a concerned boyfriend, you know, just concerned. And he got on me. He was like, mm, and you're not leaving if your numbers are not above a nine or nine or better. And so when it did my blood again, he was like, you need to... And I was like, it's always the money, it's the money. He was like, oh, so it's the money or is it your life? And he said, you know, you gotta get this get this done, um, ASAP. He said, because you about to kill yourself. You wanna, you know, live, you know, you have children, blah, blah, blah. So he, he, he got on me, so I'm like, and it was just like, I don't know, I just think it's something about the black doctors that really get on you. Well, for me, maybe it was a black thing, I don't know. But I didn't have the same experience with a white doctor, unless I don't. I don't know. I'm not saying black or white, but for me, my experience that's what it was. So I had my blood work done again um, to check my levels, and I think it was a seven. So it went from a three and a half to a seven. He was like, mm -mm. he said, you are not leaving it till you're at least at a nine. And so they gave me another bag of blood, um, two more bags of blood. And so the next day, in order to leave, he said, you got to be at least at a nine. And so when they ran and did the blood work again, I was at a nine. I mean, for four bags of blood, that's still not a lot. But he was okay for me to go. And so here I am today because my, like I said before, if you don't know, my, my um, menstruals were very very heavy they also they did you know ultrasound sonogram all that stuff and said that I also have um, fibroids which is also causing the heavy periods and I, I'm not 100% clear on this but he says even if you decide not to have the hysterectomy you go through menopause you're still gonna bleed because you have these fibroids you're gonna keep bleeding and I was like oh so I thought once you went through menopause, just everything just stopped. He was like, no, you got fibroids. You need to get those taken care of. So, and then um, they did, when the results came for the um, sonogram and the, all that stuff, they said I had about three fibroids and one was the size of a four month old fetus. Now that I went to pre-op, so in two days, so I already have to leave this on. I got special soap that I have to do. Um, you wash with special soap. They did an EKG just to make sure my heart was okay. Um, they took a lot of blood to make sure. So if I if my levels are low when I come in for surgery, I'm gonna have to have another blood transfusion before the surgery, you know, to take into consideration for the blood that I'll probably lose during the surgery. So it's a lot. I have to use a special soap the day before and really scrub, leave it on for five minutes, then um, take it off, clean bedding, clean towel. So I have to use the soap the day of surgery. And I'm same procedure. And I really have to look over the instructions that I received from the surgeon. And he was in there, he was like, well, he said, a year ago you had like a little cyst on your ovary. Cause I said, I wanted to keep my ovaries. And he said, sometimes he says, I'm at the, in the middle of whether to keep them or let it go. And he says, um, he's like a no nonsense matter of fact. He's like, you need to get this done. What's the problem here? Get it done. 
And so when I spoke to him this morning, he was like, and I was like, oh, I want to keep, you know, my ovaries because I don't want to do the hormone therapy. I would have to start hormones right away. And I was like, and I don't want to start no hormones that have to take the pills. I don't know how long I have to take the pills, but I got to take the pills for a couple of years. And I was like, I don't do that. And he was like, mm, if you got a cyst or something on your ovaries, I'm taking them out. <laughs> I'm just taking them out. <laughs> so, you know, he said it's not worth the problem since I'm already gonna be in there. Um, said that I'll have a lot of bloating. He said the most pain that I'll have will come from the bloating because I guess they blow up your stomach so they can see with the camera, you know, so they got a good view. They'll remove the uterus through um, my cervix area. They'll take that out through there. So I'll be having a laparoscopic surgery so it's new technology of robotic surgery. So it's not the same as the old school hysterectomies where they give you like a C-section cut and, you know, open you up. So it's not like that. Recovery shouldn't be as bad. So no lifting for, you know, four to six weeks, no heavy lifting, nothing like that. Just take it easy. Nothing uh, heavier than five pounds. Uh, take it easy. Don't wear flip flops because they're more concerned with you falling. So if anything, if he has to do anything additional or if there are any minor complications, I'll have to stay overnight, but I should be able to go like two, three hours after surgery. And Bobby wanted to stay with me during surgery. She wanted to, you know, stay and wait in the waiting room. And I told her, no, go live your life because there was a function and I really wanted her to attend the function. I was like, no, all you're going to do is sit there and sit there for hours. You could be doing stuff. Just drop me off and I'll call when it's time to pick me up. I said, but I, I don't know. I just felt like I don't want you sitting there when there's something else you could be doing. I don't want your life to stop because of me, because of my issues. I don't know that. I don't, does that sound weird? I just want her to just still live. And I didn't want her to miss this this event. So it took a lot of convincing. She said, no, I want to be there, I want to be there. I was like, no, it's okay, it's okay. Don't worry about it, you're just gonna sit there anyway. It's not gonna be exciting. So uh, I think she's gonna go and I'll just call her when it's time to be picked up. And if I have to wait until things are finished, I don't mind waiting. You know, half the time I, I'll sit in my car for two hours and be like, dang, I've been here that long. I don't know, I'm, I've become a car sitter. <laughs> Are any of you a car sitter? Do you know what I mean? You can just, you know, you get somewhere, you just sit in your car 30, 40, 50 minutes. Sometimes I would drive home after work and sit in my car in the driveway. They'd be like, uh, where are you? When are you coming? I said, I'm already home. I'm just in the driveway. <laughs> so that is it. So I just wanted to let you guys know uh, what's going on. And if anybody else is having a similar experience or whatever, can enlighten maybe my story or my experience can enlighten someone else let them know it's okay but i will make sure that i check in with you guys let you know that i'm okay and if you have these problems especially severe anemia it's not worth your life and i don't know why i waited this long to take action you know sometimes they say when you get so uncomfortable it'll force you to change and i think this is the time that I've been forced to change. I, the last menstrual I had, I bled for like a month and a half. Love life where? Love life where? And nowhere. <laughs> so, you know, at that stage, I'm glad I'm not, you know, dating or, you know, even married. Because I know another lady at my school, she had the procedure done. And she would just say, I just, I just miss my husband. I just, I just miss him. And plus, she, I think her bleeding was worse than mine. But I don't think she ever had to go to the ER for blood transfusions. So, you know, we handled things differently. My body was just like, uh-uh, you bleeding too much, sis. <laughs> you need to go get a refill. My fuel tank was low. So I had to go fill, fill my tank, honey. I had to go fill this tank with some new uh, hemoglobins, okay? And so that's what I did. So just to let you know, that is what's happening. That's what's going on. And I just feel like so much is happening. I, but I know I'm gonna be all right. Something's gonna happen, something's gonna work out. So I'm just gonna put it in his hands and, and let the chips fall where they may. He has never forsaken me. Things may not happen when I want it to happen. 
my nerves may be a little bad, but I'm just trying to teach myself more to trust the process. Cause no matter what, something will work out. Something will happen and just keep my head up. So if you're going through something, keep your head up. Something's gonna happen. It is what it is. And whatever's meant for you um, can never be taken away from you. So just ride it out, ride it out. And this too shall pass. I still need to get the seats back in this car. I just don't feel like doing it, bro. Maybe I'll work on that tomorrow, today, tomorrow. But until then, I'm going to meet um, some friends for lunch and I'll do some work. I still got work to do. I'm still trying to save all my files <laughs> from the computer, from the school's computer. So I have to give that back um, probably before the end of this week or so. So, I don't know, the process is just tedious and then sometimes the downloads work and sometimes they don't. It's been a lot. I got a lot going on, y'all. But I don't know. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. And this too shall pass. Okay? Okay? All right. So, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, share the video. Like the video. Subscribe if you're new here. Follow this journey because there's going to be a lot of stuff going on. I'm um, talk about I want to share my healing process and the incisions, the bloating. If it's something that you've been through or you're considering. So hopefully my experience will enlighten you what to do, what not to do. So I have to take my nose ring out. Bobby's going to have to do that or I have to go to a tattoo shop. Get that taken out because I can't do it. Uh, no jewelry. Um, they said no nail polish. The she was like, but you're fine in that area. So, we'll see. I took the bangles off, y'all, because I know that was a little annoying. It got annoying to me. Until next time. Later.